Hello everyone, this is Michael Turner with Michael J. Turner Home Inspections and today we're going to talk about isolating an electrical subpanel. What does that mean? Well basically if we look at this diagram here we have a meter base. This is where Anti-G or Clico puts in their meter. Let's follow these lines out. We have a red wire, we have a white wire, and we have a black wire. The red and the black are the high voltage lines. This is 120 volts on the red and 120 volts on the black. This will give you the 240 volts needed to supply a single phase system. Uh, the neutral comes right off of the meter and it follows into the, into the main electrical panel. As you can see, we have a black and a red, a white and a green. Again, we have the 240 volts, each one supplying 120 volts each. We have a neutral and a ground. Okay, notice here the circle around the yellow is the grounds and the neutral are bonded together at the main panel. You want to connect both the grounds and the neutral at the main panel. Now, sometimes we have subpanels, which is downstream. So I'm going to read to the side here. It says a subpanel is an electrical breaker panel downstream of the main breaker panel, the main principal breaker. Okay, current will follow every available path back to its source. To prevent the potential for current or electricity to flow back through the home and its components, it is imperative to isolate the neutral from the ground. If a wire is faulty and finds its way touching something it shouldn't be, you won't get shocked. Now, as shown in the illustration, the main electrical panel and the neutral grounds connect together, and that's good. And the sub panel downstream, the neutral is isolated and the ground is bonded to the metal frame of the panel. Um, I, I have a, a better demonstration for licensed electricians, but just the general knowledge. Let's continue on. So here we have the neutrals and the grounds bonded at the main panel. If you notice, there's a large breaker here. Now, this is probably going to be a 100 amp breaker that's going to feed power to the sub panel. So let's say we have a main panel outside of 200 amps and inside we have a sub panel in the laundry room or the garage at 100 amps. So this is a 100 amp breaker. We're going to send 240 volts here to the main. We're going to put the neutral here. Now this is going to be isolated and nothing's going to touch this neutral. And then the grounds are going to be bonded to the metal frame. This is where we want to isolate the panel. Now many times electrical panels will have a bus bar that ties the neutrals and the grounds together. This bar would have to be removed. Okay. All the neutrals would be installed on the neutral side and it would be off the panel, not touching any metal, usually with plastic bushings. And then this terminal bore that's installed, most of the time the manufacturer does not provide it, so the electrician is going to have to provide it. This will be mounted to the metal frame. And like I said, it's important to separate and isolate the neutral from the grounds at the sub panel only. This is what I have for you. Michael J. Turner, Home Inspections.